Happy lunch hour, gang. Okay, Friday, and we're getting some interesting information out that we might have known a little bit about, but it's getting a little worse than we thought about. We all know winter's coming. It gets cold, okay? And there's parts of this that affect those of you in Europe, and there's parts of uh, this that affect those of us in the United States, okay? Uh, I'll start with the European one. Winter's coming. Remember what happened in Germany last year? Remember what happened all over Europe? People standing in line for coal, cutting down uh, historic or sacred forests, whatever you want for wood, because, oh my God, you know, we've got to go to all this uh, renewable energy crap that didn't work. You know, it's like they had all their solar panels up there in Germany and it snowed on them and they couldn't get any power. Well, what you've got going on over in Europe and guys get ready is even though Germany has said they're going to turn, they're going to switch back to some of the coal fired plants. Yeah. It's the middle of October and they haven't done that yet. Okay. You've got very low coal prices and very high natural gas prices. And guess what? They haven't gone back to the coal. If you're in Europe, Start planning your own way to heat yourself this year, okay, or this winter. Uh, Europe has said that they're going to import 60% less coal because, you know, the natural gas coming from Russia is so reliable right now with the war going on, right? You know, and I mean, all this natural gas that the United States is shipping over there, yeah, guess what? That's going to slow down too, hopefully, unless Joe sells all our resources here so we can freeze so he can keep everybody else warm. Well, he wouldn't sell it. He'd just give it away. That's typical Joe. He just thinks we have everything here. But so let's look at a, uh, the next part, all right? So let's talk about oil here and everything that's going on in the Middle East. The Department of Energy announced that they want to, all of a sudden, remember we're at 10% capacity in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. The Department of Energy announced they want to buy 6 million barrels of crude oil to refill the SPR. And they want to buy it at $79 a barrel. There's only one problem. Oil right now is at $93 a barrel. Okay, And... I don't see any countries in the Middle East going, hey, Joe, let's give you a deal on this. Okay? You know, the funny part is, if we go back a couple uh, couple months here, if we go back to, oh, where would we say, eh, June, okay, oil was down around $72 a barrel. Did we fill it then? Nah. Let's just wait till it's $20 higher and then we'll say, we want to fill it back at the prices we could get it over the summer. This, this, you know, this is the kind of idiosity we're dealing with, all right? And that's just another energy issue that we have to deal with. And we could go for days talking about what the SPR is. It's not, the SPR is not meant so that they can control the price of gasoline that we pay at the pump. The SPR is there so that in time of crisis, not mismanagement, okay, that we have oil that we can power basically our military so that we can defend the country. But Joe's failed on that too. But so let's go into what the big news is that came out today, all right? And this is, this is where it gets real scary on for a lot of us. And this is on electricity, okay? I mean, if we, again, we can go back you know, to Texas and not having enough electricity to heat or anything like that, okay? There was an article that came out on the Epic News today. I'm talking with uh, energy-related public policy analyst David Blackman. His quote the power grid issue in the United States is a huge problem. Now, we've talked about some of this before, but I want to give you this. This is his quote. 
And it's much bigger than people know because right now we have a crisis in the supply of electric transformers for our power grid. We've talked about that before. Okay, Transformers are an integral part of every electricity project in America, around the world really, and they're in very short supply. It's taking up now to four years to source new supplies for transformers. Inventories are very low. We get all the parts for transformers from China. We don't make them here, okay? So there's the problem. And all China has to do, and remember, it was, we talked about this about a year ago, and it was a two-year wait for transformers. Now it's a four-year wait for transformers. Transformers blow. Parts go bad. People shoot them up, okay, to take out our grid. Now, Going into winter, how many people are on electric heat? A lot, including me, okay? Some people, New England uses fuel oil. Some people use natural gas. Some people use electricity. What do we do when the overwhelming majority of people in this country can't heat their home with electricity? Remember, Joe wants everything to be electric. No more gas no more fuel oil, no more nothing, but we want to get everything electric. You know, no more stoves, no more cars. It's all got to be electric, but we can't handle this. Costs of transformers, which were three to four thousand dollars a piece last year, are now twenty grand. So your electric company all of a sudden needs to replace a transformer. Well, maybe they have to wait four years for it. But where's this five to seven times the money coming from? Oh, guess what? Your bill is going to go up. I got my electric bill here uh, last week. And per kilowatt hour, I am now paying 11 cents, 11.09 cents. That is the highest it has ever been for since I've been in this house, okay? So the cost of electricity is continuing to go up. I can't speak of what it is for everybody else because we all get our electricity generated different ways. A lot of mine is hydro. I know people are going to say, I wish it was only 11 cents a kilowatt hour. I get it. It's different for everybody. But go look at your electric bill and see what the price was. Most electric bills will show you a year ago and what the price is now. And you can see where it is. You can go look and see what the historical prices are online for kilowatt hours for, for your area. I encourage you to do this. This is the thing. We need to come up with our own solutions for heat, for electricity, because if a transformer goes down around you, maybe they can find one in the next county or the next state that somebody has the parts they need. But that just means, like I said yesterday in the video, the clock is ticking because if it's now four years to replace that part, what if three more go out in your area? Now there's no parts. I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones, we won't have parts for your uh, to get electricity to your house probably for the next six months. What are your plans? Now, you guys know me. I do not believe in solar for large scale. It does not work. That's been proven timeless, countless times over and over and over again. Okay, You're not going to be able to power a city on solar. You may be able to power a building, an office building, but that's going to take up a lot of space, more than what the office building has in square footage. Okay, For a house, okay, for my system, I hit, you guys saw it, the maximum I can take is 3,200 watts of solar panels. I just got eight solar panels, eight 390 watt solar panels here the other day. Those will be going up either this fall or in the spring to generate some power for my house. It ain't going to generate everything. I've also got the portable panels for my generators, so I can use those as well. But you start talking about significant amounts of money. But the thing to look at is, what's the difference? Do I have any?
power. Okay, can I keep any of my food cold, my food fresh? Okay, you know, milk not going to do you a whole lot of good sitting out on the counter. It'll turn. Okay, or butter or anything like that. You know, go pick your vegetables unless you process them right away. Y'all know this. They'll go soft real quick. You need to refrigerate them. All that meat that you've got put away, unless it's all canned, something's got to happen to that. You've got to do something. You've got to have some sort of backup heat source that you own, that you have the physical possession of. No different than gold and silver, where we say if you don't hold it, you don't own it. It's no different than, the, than saying the same thing with your firewood or your propane, or your kerosene, or whatever you use, or your heating oil, whatever you use to keep yourself warm this winter. If you're counting on the city gas to be turned on, you're playing a risky game. If you're counting on city electricity, you're playing a risky game. If you're counting on the local firewood guy to come be able to deliver you a load of firewood when the natural gas is turned off and it's now Christmas Eve and you go, crap, we've got no heat. Remember, that happened to me two years ago. The power went out on Christmas Eve. Okay, He's not going to go, yeah, let me get up for my dinner and go bring you some firewood right now. You need to have this ahead of time. This is a very basic necessity, keeping yourself warm. If we get a cold winter, which is predicted throughout the entire country. I mean, down in the south here, we're supposed to have a colder, wetter winter than normal. You guys up north, yeah, you're expected to have a colder winter. What are your backup plans in case the power goes out, in, in case there is no fuel to keep you warm? Do something about that now while you can. It's, I hope that if you had a propane tank to fill, you did that back in July when prices were down lower than they are now because, again, nobody expected what's going on in Israel, but it didn't do any good for natural gas prices, for oil prices. Joe ain't fracking in the United States. Joe's not drilling in the United States, so we don't have those options to get cheap domestic energy. We ha we're relying on all our friends around the world, like the Middle East or Venezuela or Russia, you know, because that's a great energy strategy. So I'm, I'm just trying to bring this up again. Now, I am going to give you guys one thing, and if you made it this long, you will be happy to hear. Uh, if you need to keep some food cold, uh, a couple of times, I think about a year ago, you guys saw me review the <clears throat> AccuPower lithium ion solar solar operator, solar rechargeable cooler slash refrigerator freezer. Okay. Uh, it's like 53 square, or I forget what it is. I mean, uh, crap, I can't think of the measurements off the top of my head. I don't want to lie here. Uh, but it's the cooler that I use. It's great for keeping some stuff cold. I mean, I can keep, if the power goes out and I didn't have my generators, I could throw my milk in there. I could throw enough food in there to hope, you know, if the power came back on, I'm good. And I can recharge the battery by solar. Elliot got a hold of me, Wellbots, as you guys know, and they have a early Black Friday deal for us, okay? Uh, on the Lion Coolers to get them. They've got a big shipment shipment in of them. If it's something you're looking at as a prep, maybe as a Christmas present, the cooler normally runs at $779. Bucks. It's expensive. Elliot's got a coupon for us for 40% off, bringing it down to $467.40. Okay. So if you've seen those videos before and you said, hey, this is a great idea, I can get some of them. Like I said, I've got one. I love it. I reviewed a different, or I didn't even review it. I tested a 
second cooler, and it was such junk compared to this one that I sent it back to the company. I said, there's no way in the world I could recommend this one. Uh, but this uh, Lion Cooler, the Echo Power Lion Cooler, I got this thing's awesome. So if you're interested in that, I will put the link below. I'm sorry, now I can see what it is. It's 52 quarts. That's what it holds. Okay, so it's a good size uh, cooler. Uh, if you're interested, I will put the link in the coupon code below in the uh, description. Now, we're also going to give one away. And we're going to do this on tomorrow night's live stream. Uh, again, this is a must reside in the United States. So first thing you need to do is put the state in which you live under the, uh, in your comment. Primary comments only as per normal. Do not make a reply to a comment with something that's it. Make sure you have one comment on the video and it includes this, the state in which you live in. All 50 are eligible for this one. And then the next thing I want to know that put up there is when you're going to put your Christmas tree up. Because you've probably all been into stores and you've seen that Christmas decorations have been out for a month already. So what's your traditional time to put the Christmas tree up? So that would be it. It'll be a live drawing on the live stream tomorrow night, which is at 9 p.m. Eastern. Always the same time. Hasn't changed. 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Uh, Mountain, and 6 p.m. Pacific. So we will draw it live with the random comment picker. The person whose name is drawn will have to be there. It is, must be present to win. They will have three minutes to reply, just as always, and we will go from there. So... Do something about keeping yourself warm, guys. If it's splitting wood for the fireplace, if it's topping off a propane tank, if it's figuring out space heaters, please come up with something because from what we're hearing, one little blip in the system can make a lot of people awfully cold. And like, remember a couple of years ago in Texas, like I said, you had some 20 odd people, I think it was, that died, froze to death. Not a way you want to go. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Pinball out.